Hello and welcome everybody, it's your boy King Demps and we're back with another Scores on the Doors. You know the drill by now, I'm giving all of these teams a grade for how they performed at the IEM Rio Major. This is it, this is the real deal. Who cares if you finish 5th to 8th, what matters is your Scores on the Doors grade. As always, we go from top to bottom. We kick things off with FaZe. This is an easy F. FaZe fucked it. They shit the bed real hard at the Major. One of the biggest stories, obviously, is FaZe flopping and falling on their faces. And i got to be perfectly honest, I have felt like it has been coming for a little while now. If we come to FaZe's uh, team overview here and we go to events and end it, ignore that one. We'll do a scores on the doors for that, don't you worry. Um, but if we look at kind of the events that happened since the break, obviously they smashed IEM Cologne, absolute baller, won this meaningless online thing. And then it wasn't too great at the Blast Premier 4 groups and the ESL Pro League. Obviously the RMR, they had their struggles at well, as well. If we open up the RMR uh, and we go to phase, as we can see, they had some problems against Gamer Legion, went to like 58 fucking overtimes. Had some problems against Fnatic, and if we look at the series against Sprout, they also had some issues here, having to win on Ancient in overtime, and then having, well, actually having to go to a third map because they lost Nuke in overtime. Basically, what I'm saying is their form after the break was, like, serviceable at best. In fact, really, for FaZe's high standards that they set in the first half of the year, the form after the break was, was pretty mediocre and underwhelming as it was. I think an event like this, where they truly shot the bed won like no games and got a real splash of cold water to the face a proper wake-up call was honestly due it was just coming um i can't say exactly what happened to phase it just felt like they lost like 10 percent on everyone it felt like everybody dropped off a bit rain not so surprising although he's still been fairly reliable for like good halves certain maps he's a bit of a specialist on i'm thinking of nuke but like rops and brokey are the two particularly i think lost like that edge that made them so good in Rops's case the numbers were still fine but it just felt like his impact kind of fell off a cliff that's how it felt to me it felt like he wasn't doing the things in game like that amazing clutch from Katowice I want to say on Inferno there was either Cologne or Katowice I'm pretty sure Katowice those moments were no longer happening I'm thinking of Brokey had an, an amazing moment on uh, an Inferno against I want to say NIP earlier on in the year there were just these like special moments where FaZe showed that the thing that like elevated them and made them like a great team from, from just being a very good team was their clutch factor. They were so good at pulling rounds out of their asses, the individuals, and it just stopped happening for FaZe. And it felt like with that, the clutch factor disappearing and their players kind of losing 10%, I would say Twists is the only person who I think has been consistently really fucking good throughout FaZe's year. And it, honestly, I would say he's like my player of the year for FaZe just because of how consistent he's been and how amazing he's been, particularly again in clutch scenarios. Twists has pulled off some fucking incredible ones this year. This was all coming for FaZe and... Cloud9, they tossed away two pretty convincing leads at points where they should have really closed the game. Vitality was just a spanking, and we all know what happened against Bad News Eagles. They fucked the veto, honestly, allowing Vertigo through, and then they lost Vertigo to BNE. Look, you can talk all you want about, oh, FaZe were, were trying to flex their map pool. They were trying to utilize a series against a lesser team to kind of put doubt in the veto for bigger teams they played later in the tournament. It horrifically backfired. It didn't seem a smart thing to do when FaZe were in poor form to go to a map that they very rarely play competitively. Basically, this was just a disaster for FaZe, this whole run. Um, it's great to see that they improved, obviously, after at the Blast 4 finals, but we'll talk about that properly on that Scores on the Doors. This was just an F tournament for FaZe. Yeah, it flopped horrifically. Not much more to say. We're also going to give Nip an F, just because I think going 0-3, considering it's kind of similar to FaZe's 0-3, except FaZe overall, I think, had stiffer opposition. Like Cloud9, Vitality, Bad News, Eagles, Reeds is a harder schedule to me than Fnatic, Outsiders, and Sprout. NIP obviously had only just brought in Alexi B. They looked really fucking good at the RMR with Alexi B. It was like, revelation! Hampus suddenly can do what he wants, run around and frag like a mad lad. 
Res on the AWP, look, I'm not sold on that at all. I don't know why you take one of the best riflers in terms of ceiling in the game and put him on the AWP where like, okay, yeah, he has some maps where he looks good. He also has some maps where he looks pretty uncomfortable. So that's going to be a slow transition for Res, as in from this point. Like, I don't think we're going to see like big gains each tournament. I think it's going to be a slow pro process. And honestly, I'd love to see Nip get an AWPer. I'd, I'd love to see Nip get an AWP. I don't know who they could get. I don't know who in the Nordic scene is there and, and available to AWP. It would have been great to have Halzerk, if I'm perfectly honest. Now that you've switched and gone to like this Nordic English speaking approach to like the roster, I'd have loved to have seen Halzerk in this Nip lineup. Um, yeah, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. The run itself, like, Nip weren't that bad against Fnatic or Outsiders. I would say the Sprout series is where they were really disappointing. Like, losing their pick, 16-11. Okay, they got to double digits, but that's not as close as I think you would... I mean, you'd want to win your own pick, wouldn't you? But, you know, VOs at the top of CS are a bit fucking wonky. It, it, it's, it's surprisingly often that teams lose their map pick, especially certain teams. There are certain teams that just are notorious for kind of losing their map pick. Zyphon had a banger series here, so yeah, Nip got kind of bodied by like a, a young fucking superstar. Uh, we know Stair's good. Look, look, we know Sprout are like decent. They've got some skill ceiling or whatever, but if you're ninjas, you should 100% of the time be expecting to win that series. It's an F. You can't go out of the major 03, especially the amount of money ninjas have spent on their roster. Device, I know that didn't work out. Brolan, Alexi B, you know, they're willing to kind of splash the cash, make signings, get out there and get players. They've got to find a way to tie it together because it's just too fucking long now that Nip have been floundering about struggling to put together uh, a, a roster that can win things. They've been surprisingly competitive over the last year or two, despite all of the wibbly wobblies with the roster. But yeah, I'm kind of getting sick of watching this Nip kind of flop around and, and not find much success. I want to I want to see some potential with this roster. And to be fair, they were all right at the Blast Fall final. We'll get to that next episode. Right, we'll speed up for some of the lesser teams here. I'm thinking like your Sprouts, Bad News Eagles, even your Ensis and Bigs of the world. So Bad News Eagles, uh, honestly, they get a B. Just making it to this stage of the major is already an achievement for them. Beating phase, an achievement. I'll give them a B minus, I guess, because I think they exceeded my expectations a little bit, beating phase. Um they got kind of comfortably handled by Na'Vi, but I think making it to this stage of the major is already a success for Bad News Eagles. They can have a C plus. We'll go C plus because they only they won a game. I would say that is like a, a solid performance from them winning a series, especially against FaZe. The same old kind of problems with Bad News Eagles appear, a lack of discipline. You see him push, you see him get antsy, you see him kind of running around in the open sometimes. Uh, it, and it, it kind of looks like somebody playing matchmaking just got bored and started running around looking for shit to happen. Uh, they miss grenades too often. They're a little bit simplistic in the way they approach the game, but they have humongous strengths in a very, very high skill ceiling, a very fluid and... Um, what, what's the best way to put it? Yeah, I think just saying a very fluid way to play in the game, like their team play is very, very good. And I think they understand each other as players quite well. And so when it works, it, it they play as a solid unit and it looks really, really good. Um, I think Bad News Eagles actually have a lot of potential. And if they could get an organization around them that could stick some more coaching staff, you know, an analyst, a coach, get a little bit more support around them to kind of brush up on these being a bit too simplistic, brush up on these not missing so many nades, brush up a little bit on this discipline, then I think Bad News Eagles could very, very easily be like a solid top 20 team, for sure, at least. Um, but yeah, for this tournament, C+. Vitality, uh, it's got to be an E. It's not quite an F because they at least did win a game and they were like very, very close in some of these games that they lost. But yeah, got to do better for Vitality considering the standard they've set for themselves. They've got Zywoo, one of the best players in the whole fucking world. You know, in terms of ceiling, probably only really up there with like Simple and Nico. Um, and I would say, yeah, I would say Simple and Nico, honestly, in terms of raw ceiling. I don't know if there's anybody else that can like get up there with those three. Um, so, yeah, this is an E for Vitality. The only reason it's not an F is because they at least won a game and they were competitive in some of the other games they lost. But going out 1-3, not good enough. Failure for sure. Not quite as epic a failure as FaZe or Nip, I would say. A sprout get i think they get a c plus um 
the the reason I don't give them more credit for making this stage of the major specifically is just because they got straight here through the RMR, and I I think this RMR in particular kind of showed some of the uh, weaknesses of the seeding system and the way the RMRs work at the moment. You know, it, it allowed Sprout to get a legend spot where. If you look at their RMR and who they beat to do it, probably doesn't deserve a legend spot, if I'm being frank. I also would have liked to have seen Sprout in the challenger stage against some of those challenger stage teams. I think they could have made it out of the challenger stage. I think they would have come into the legend stage in better form if they'd have had that, like, uh, those reps, that game time. I like this Sprout roster. They get a C plus here because they won a series. Um, and I think they've got potential Stair, Lanx. I think Refresh is going to grow as an in-game leader. I think Xyphon's really good. Uh, the only one I'm not super convinced on is Slacks. Like, he doesn't do it for me personally. But apart from that, I'm actually all about this Sprout roster. Look forward to seeing what they can do next year. But for this tournament, C+. It's so, uh, We've got Ents now. Ents, honestly, I'm going to give a C plus as well because I think considering that their roster is is relatively new, considering, considering, <laughs> considering it was a pretty significant overhaul. Yeah, I think they need to get credit for doing this well. Beating Bad News Eagles, beating Vitality, running Miles pretty close in the qualification series. I would say they exceeded my expectations. I'm on the borderline of a C plus and a B minus. I think I'm going to go B minus because I've given too many C pluses already. And these are my rankings. I can do what the fuck I like. So yeah, B plus for Ents. I think they're looking decent. I think next year we can give them a fair shake of the stick and give a more of a, a final judgment on how this project in this roster particularly is going to pan out. But I like the personnel. I like Valder, I like Sun Pius, I think they're both good players. And I think this major just came a little bit too soon. Their first tournament pro league was pretty disappointing. They looked better at the RMR. This major came around pretty quickly after that. So, you know, there's a limit to how much you can kind of work in between and like sort your problems out. But yeah, I think against it, all right. B, plus, B minus for me. Next up, we've got Big. I'm going to give Big a bigger. I think Big get a C plus. Big. Because win two best of ones, Sprout, whatever. Mao's pretty decent, actually, because Mao's obviously ended up going on and, and performing quite well at this tournament. But then just getting banged out 2-0 straight in all the series kind of shows where Big were at this tournament. They were playing with a stand-in. Actually, fuck it. They can have a B-minus as well, considering the fact they were playing with Sin instead of their roster. And their roster has just been all over the fucking place for the last couple of months of the year, last few months. It was, yeah, they, they couldn't really... Uh, get like a consistent five on the server so i'll give them a b minus i think they were very competitive overall kind of got banged out in the series but yeah they can have a b minus i think they exceeded expectations getting two three and having a chance to qualify to be honest who we got next liquid i i think liquid need to get a c minus because i think they should i think expectations would have been to qualify I think they were very unlucky not to both this series against Heroic and this series against Spirit. If on a different day with things going slightly differently, I think they could have won these series and qualified. Um, I think the main problem for Liquid here was just Yekindar was off form this major. Honestly, I think that's all it was. The fact that they were still so competitive and close to teams like Heroic and Spirit playoff teams, um, you know, and in the case of Heroic all the way to the, to the final, I think if Yekindar is in better form, even not at full strength, but even at like 85%. Whereas I think at this tournament, he was at like 70% at best, uh, just in terms of raw fragging output and his impact on the server. So C minus for Liquid. I think they slightly uh, underperformed. No, D plus. I think we need to be a little bit harsher on them just because of the standards that they've now set themselves Liquid. They've now kind of solidified themselves as very much a solid top five team. So I think this is a a D plus performance. It's not like a total disaster, but it, it did slip under expectations uh, to finish in this spot. Okay, now we've obviously got to go to the teams who finished uh, in the playoffs. We'll go with Fnatic first. Fnatic get a B, just a straight B for this tournament performance. Really, really fucking good. Beat Nip, beat Ents, beat Big. Just kind of showing that they're a clear, like, solid, I would say, kind of top 10 team beating these guys. Obviously got spanked by Heroic. Just don't look at that. 
Um, they did get outclassed by outsiders in this quarterfinal. It wasn't a complete spanking, but they were outclassed. But I just think overall their tournament run deserves a B. Uh, yeah, a B, just because before the tournament, if I was looking at this, I'd be like, yeah, Furia, Cloud9, Heroic, Na'Vi. Obviously, I would have assumed Phase and Vitality and Liquid. I would have put Fnatic towards the this area, the bottom of whether they would qualify or not. So the fact that they managed to do so, hey, fucking shout outs to my boy, Dem. And obviously, Mezzi representing UKCS got to back the boy. Um... So yeah, they get a B. It was pretty good. Fair play. And I'm excited to see where this Fnatic roster can go, if they can keep improving, if they can get Fasha more comfortable in his new kind of roles, if Nick Dos can get a little bit more consistent. I think we're cooking with gas with this Fnatic roster, to be honest. And I'm pretty sure I've said the same in a previous episode of Scores on the Doors. It's a B. I've said it a few times, but it's a B. Ah, Cloud9, this is a hard one to grade because obviously they came through the challenger stage after a rocky start, had to show a lot of resilience, had to show a lot of resilience in individual games here. The fact that they convincingly dispatched the ultimate finalists and ultimate runners-up Heroic 2-0 here, it shows to you what the kind of peak Cloud9 at this tournament was. And the peak Cloud9, now... <laughs> the peak Cloud9 at this tournament were the true challengers to outsiders. I think Cloud9 were the team that at their peak level in this event showed a level that could have matched outsiders. The problem is, is they would have had to meet in the semifinals anyway. But uh, yeah, I think Cloud9 just kind of collapsed uh, in this series against Maus. And this is Cloud9's eternal problem. Uh, they just collapse when the going gets tough. Um, as I said, they showed a lot of resilience to even get this far, but this is like, there's no pressure on in this game. There's no pressure on in this game. There's no pressure on in this game because they started with a win. There's a lot less pressure here because they then win this. There's so much less pressure here. They've got multiple chances after it. And then here, when the pressure is finally on, they just flop. Uh, Shiro played fucking amazing. Axile really let his team down. And Axile is the one who I think is the most likely on an individual level. To just kind of go into his shell and and just disappear from the server when the games are a bit rough. Uh, I also think Nafani's style of leading is not very consistent. And I think he struggles um, to lead when plan A is not working. I think, yeah, the fact that minus inters is going to be the move. I'll probably talk more about this in a specific video. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, broski. I, what do they get? I think they have to get a C. I think they have to get a C. I know they've made the playoffs of a major, and I know they came through two tough stages to do it. I'll give them a C plus for their legend stage performance, but I think this is just meeting expectations for a team like Cloud9. If you're in the top eight in the world rankings and you walk into a major, then you should be expecting to make the playoffs. Um, assuming that there's no fuckery going on with the rankings because of the tournament break or whatever. Uh, yeah, I think Cloud9 have to get a C plus. This was this was the most disappointing um result of the entire major for me. No offense to Maus. I like Maus and what they're doing with obviously their academy uh and promotion approach. I think it's it's borne a lot of fruit for them and they're looking really good. But this Cloud9 team should have gone further. Um, and they just let themselves down, particularly on this ancient. They just kind of collapsed. C plus. Spirit. Hmm. Hmm. I think Spirit probably get a B minus, to be honest. Bad News Eagles, Sprout and Liquid. Meh, it's all right. And they were very competitive with Fury and Outsiders, basically showing you that Spirit very much deserved to be in the playoffs and could have given any team a decent game in the playoffs. I think the problem with this series against Heroic, I covered this one for HLTV, and uh, oh, yeah, they they were not really going on Vertigo. And it, Vertigo was a map before this game. They had like some big ass win streak on, and they just kind of like <coughs> did a little <coughs> and uh, shit the bed. And then Overpass, yeah, they, again, the first half was not good, and it was the second half of Overpass where Spirit kind of woke up and made it competitive, and it was just too late. It was just too late. I think the occasion maybe got to Spirit's younger players a little bit. There are three players there with very precious little LAN experience. Uh, and I think 
you've got to appreciate particularly the fact they were going up against heroic who had a lot of crowd support behind them yes you can play in arenas you can have lan experience but it's all on a scale and it's all different there's lan experience like v4 future sports last year at the end of last year which was like a studio lan yes you're there playing not at home which is obviously good experience for a team that has been playing mostly at home and mostly online but it's not the same as an arena LAN or a, or a stadium LAN, whatever. And it's definitely not the same as a LAN like this was in Brazil with a very hostile crowd against you. And that's what Spirit had to deal with. And that's just a, a situation that you just, you can't unfortunately get experience in in CSGO. There aren't crowds as partisan as this Brazil crowd was basically ever. It just basically doesn't happen. Very, very rarely does it. So... You know, can't blame Spirit because there's just no way to prepare and get um, get acquainted and accustomed to that kind of environment. So they get a B minus from me because I think overall their tournament performance was solid. I think this kind of resume, including close losses in best of one to Fury and Outsiders, shows that Spirit were a really good team at this major. They came up against an in-form heroic who had the crowd behind them. Yeah, B minus for Spirit. Right, we're getting towards the business end. We just got to get Na'Vi out of the way. Na'Vi is fucking hard to rank. I think you have to give them a C-. And that might seem brutal for a team that made it to the playoffs, but I think making it to the playoffs is the absolute more bare minimum expectation for Na'Vi. You, you make the playoffs or bust, quite frankly. If you don't make the playoffs, you're probably getting an F. I don't give a shit what results happened. You're probably getting an F. Um... And the reason I even give them the credit of a C- minus and not going down to like a D or something is because, like I say, it was the hostile crowd. The same kind of shit that I said for Spirit applies even more so for Na'Vi. I just, there's no way that we can understand what it would have been like to play in that fiery cauldron. We just cannot possibly understand. There is no comparable experience unless you've played a sport in front of a very very hostile crowd a very loud crowd and a packed crowd if you've ever done that okay you can hold your hands up and say i have some idea of what navi were going through if you've never done that i'm sorry i'm sorry you can't really crit well you can criticize them but you can't be too harsh on them i think i think we have to be realistic and say that the circumstances were very very unique or does it, or should it, yeah, I'm, I'm on the borderline of like a D plus or a C minus. I think C minus because it would be a D plus if they lost to somebody other than Furia. That's the way I'll phrase it. If it had been, a, I think if they'd have played anyone else but Furia, they would have won. But because they played Furia and they had momentum against them the crowd against them the whole fucking atmosphere of the occasion against them i'll give navi a little bit of the benefit of the doubt uh and give them a c minus now we got the top four teams mal's getting a plus fuck it they get an a plus top four at the major way way exceeding expectations the way that they have done it by bringing through the academy boy them the way they did it in terms of having to grind out close games, of having to, to come from 2-2 two -two and, and do it with the pressure on. Beating Cloud9, one of the informed teams at the tournament, regardless of whether Cloud9 collapse, you've got to fucking make them collapse. You've got to put the pressure on Cloud9 so that they will crumble. And then they were all right against Outsiders. You know, they won a map. Yeah, okay. They were outclassed on the other two maps and Outsiders were deserved winners. And if you look at the ratings, that tells you a little bit more of the story of the series that it was pretty favored towards outsiders they won two maps comfortably and almost took away the map that they lost it went the full 30 but mouse deserve immense credit i'm really liking what i'm seeing out of exertion the problem at the moment is torsi's kind of kind of disappeared i don't know what's happened to torsi he is not playing anywhere near as well at the moment Kind of since Zershan's come into the lineup, so I wonder if it's just a role thing. Maybe Zershan has a little bit more uh, freedom and space. Um, Frozen stepped up hugely recently and, and is one of the better riflers in the world right now. I'm just really liking the way this Mal's roster is, is panning out. I think Dexter seems to be providing more value as an in-game leader than he was uh, with last year's Mal's. So I'm all on board. A, 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 A plus? A. If they'd have made the final, 
It probably would have been an S, to be fair. A plus. I'll give Mouse A plus. Yeah, they fucking they slap shit up. Respect. Good job, Mouse. Ballers. A hey, next we've got Furia. Again, Furia are a hard one. Top four at their home major. So top four, good home major. Shaves a smidge of the credit off because. They did have uh, a crowd unlike we've ever seen in the game, probably, backing them up. K Serato, hard carry. What a fucking hero. Absolute legend. Will be in the top 20 players of the year, and deservedly so. He uh, had a bit of a wobble after the player break. Or was it before the player break? He had a bit of a wobble, anyway. And uh, suddenly, you know, around this major, just started fucking balling out of control, really. Yuri... Let him down a little bit. Yuri and Kesarato are normally that one-two punch, and Yuri in the playoffs was a little bit absent. Got to be perfectly honest. Where did Fury go? Strolled through this legend stage. Reasonably close there. <sighs> Top four means they get a B. And I think I'm going to give them a B minus, because I think once they'd beaten Na'Vi, they should have won the major. I know Outsiders were good, but Furia had everything going for them. And if you can't win a major when virtually everything is going for you, you know, you've got your star player in the best form, as in he's looking like probably the best player at the tournament. Like if Case Wright had gotten to the final, he would have got the MVP. He 100% would have got the MVP. Uh, yeah, I would have given them a B, but I think a B minus considering the context and considering expectation. And that is an important part of the scores I give. It's not just like in pure isolation, that tournament. It's also bearing in mind kind of the context and, and the expectations coming in. And so I think my expectation was Furia would make the playoffs. And then once they do make the playoffs and the bracket looks like it does, I think you've got to be saying to yourself as Furia, all we need to do is beat an RV and this major is ours for the taking. And they didn't do it. Yeah, I, I, I'd be minus for that reason. Now we've got the big boys. Heroic get an A+. Plus. Just short of an S because of the way they capitulated in this final they were reasonably competitive on Mirage, but as you can see, I think the ratings tell a true story of what happened at that Mirage scoreline. Flatters Heroic ever so slightly. Ever, ever, ever so slightly. But they were magnificent throughout the tournament apart from that. Really good against Spirit. Really good to come through the series against Fury. And this is one of the most impressive um, results of the entire tournament, beating Fury in a semi-final with the crowd against you. Just all of this. Like, Na'Vi showed what can happen to you in that kind of environment and considering heroic have had problems performing on lan like this they deserve so much credit for this result here in these semi-finals and fucking honestly all i can say is amazing job to katie and stan yabby shush and tezes the whole bunch of them um huge respect basically huge respect for what they managed to achieve um at this major looking at their run here as well um Beat the eventual winners. Beat Fnatic, who proved to be a decent team. Beat Liquid, who we know are a decent team. Lost to Cloud9, obviously. But yeah, Cloud9 were just on that heater and had no pressure, basically. So, you know, Cloud9 perform best when there's no fucking pressure. Yeah, I think Heroic's resume is probably even stronger than Outsiders. Like, if you consider the fact Outsiders to get here only had to beat Maus, Fnatic. Um, they beat Fnatic again. Oh, Mouse, sorry, again here. They beat Spirit and Nip. Like, you know, Outsider's resume, because they'd already beaten Mouse once, you almost don't get as much credit for beating them twice because, you know, you already know the proof concept is there. And they beat Fnatic, who were probably the weakest playoffs team. Heroic had arguably the best kind of resume of wins um, prior to this grand final. I gave Heroic the slight edge in this grand final because they'd beaten Outsiders already in a map at this major. And I thought Heroic's schedule had been stronger, particularly these semifinals. Like you can't compare, you know, having Maus uh, as your opponent in the semifinal, having Furia as your opponent in the semifinal. Heroic do get an A plus though. Um... 
And the only reason they don't get an S minus or something is because of the way they capitulated in this grand final. And we've got outsiders. They get a fucking S. They don't get an S plus because they didn't have to be anyone truly, truly spectacular to make it here. And honestly, I don't think anybody could have gotten an S plus for this tournament because all of our best best teams theoretically on paper our teams like cloud nine our teams like navi our teams like uh vitality and liquid and phase all kind of flopped and had bad majors so i don't i almost think because the favorites were all so weak and vulnerable there was no chance of getting like a s plus performance because outsiders smashed expectations so thoroughly um and because they were honestly comfortable winners of this major they were comfortably the best team overall like once you account for the fact that they beat heroic who were really good like in terms of beating what was put in front of them let's phrase it that way outsiders were the best team they were comfortable in this series comfortable ultimately in this series comfortably ultimately in this series the only map they lost was against heroic basically a lot a loss against heroic here in a single map opening game of the major who really gives a shit and then this 16-14 against Spirit were the only really close points for Heroic, uh, for Outsiders. Even this series, they won two 16-10s. Ultimately, outside of, of a single map, I would say, uh, a close one against Spirit, they were comfortable throughout the Major. And we just discount, you know, who gives a shit if you lose your first game of the Major in a best of one. Outsiders get the S. Jane was incredible. Fame was incredible. Flit was incredible. Norbert and Kickert were just there filling the roles. These three were the stars of the show. Flit with his kind of like aggressive half lurking style. Fame, yeah, Fame was just an incredible closer, man. Uh, some T side rounds that he was closing out uh, in clutches and such were amazing. Really impressed with Outsiders. We all know what Outsiders style. It's slow and grindy on the T side. Um, it, it, it's very structured and calculated the way they play but it bears results it's so hard to put away it makes them competitive in nearly every game and now that they've found a good lineup and balance for them you know i gotta be honest i think buster was was holding this team back a little bit the fact that yekindar and buster have gone and outsiders have managed to get better losing yekindar one of the best players in the world I think it kind of shows you that Buster was a bit of a rate limiting factor on their play, if I'm perfectly honest. But yeah, this Outsiders team, I really hope that we we get to see them perform well at the World Final that's coming up next week. And I'm really interested to see at that World Final what happens, because obviously we've got Heroic in great form, we've got Outsiders in great form, and then we've got some of the teams we traditionally think of as being our best teams, like our Navis and Phases, also in attendance. So it's going to be thrilling to see how this season closes out. This has been the scores on the doors for the IEM Rio Magia. If you liked it, you know the drill. Like it, comment for the algo, share it with all your bestest buds. And if you didn't like it, achoo!